welcome to the Tech Women for Empowerment and Development, which is taking place as part of the Mediterranean Tech Women Week of 2020, a joint initiative of the FNF Madrid office, Womenpreneur Initiative and Mujeres Tech. We often listen to conversations led by different institutions, this is one of them, about uh, gender gap and gender diversity in business and more specifically in the tech industry, well known as a male world. It is normally said that the gender gap needs to be reduced. Achieving gender equality is one of the global goals for sustainable uh, development. However, global reports show that women in this sector are still underrepresented, underpaid and have uh, fewer opportunities to develop themselves. This doesn't seem to make sense, mainly when taking into account the results of several studies that have found that companies with more diverse teams have higher revenues. So even if numbers support diversity, why is it that gender gap is so big within the technology industry? As it stands, just 19% of the tech workforce are women. What is it that makes the gender gap in technology also a reality when speaking about education? Women enrolling on communications and information technologies degrees represent 3% of global students and in degrees under the STEM subjects that we all know are 8%. Is it a corporate culture? Is it education? Is it social standards? Whatever it is, technology is and will be the leading industry for change and change is what we are going to talk about today. My name is Sandra Vesga, I'm the communication manager for Spain of the ta tech and digital community Talent Garden. We have more than 4,500 members around Europe and we run 21 co-working spaces. And in this round table we will debate about the role of women within uh, the technology world and we will put on the table some initiatives and ideas that might help change in the future of technology and make it more diverse, more equal and therefore better. I'm sure that our speakers have to say uh, a lot of things that will inspire all of us. I'm surrounded by great professionals today. I will start with Beatriz Ramon Barreiro, welcome. Hi, thank you. You're the Chief Digital Officer at IBM for Spain, Greece, Portugal and Israel, and you lead a very big team. I'm sure you've thought many times about what needs to happen to experience change and how to apply it even in your own team. So we will talk about this later because I'm sure you have many things to say. Great. I also want to say hello to Sana Foyas in Belgium. Hello. Hello. Hi. <laughs> Welcome. Womenpreneur, the initiative that you founded and have managed since 2016, has a community with over 10,000 professionals from all around the world, precisely with the aim of uh, to advance women's place in entrepreneurial scene, technology, innovation and society. So I'm sure you also have a lot to say. <laughs> And I will also welcome Layal Gibran. How are you? From Lebanon, we've got with us the CEO and founder of Mubar Mich. It's Is it pronounced like that? It's a difficult name. <laughs> You're a social entrepreneur, one of the preferred areas, by the way, for women to, to, be, to set out. And you're very engaged with young entrepreneurs and early stage startups that are very important players within the tech industry. And Leah Henneberger, hello. Hi. Hi. Hi, Leah. I loved what you what I read on your profile about your mission: joining forces with diverse and talented people from around the world to create impact and drive change. And your mindset: you can't give what you don't have. Start with yourself. I really believe on that. So thank you all of you for joining us. I would like to start by looking at the situation as it is at the moment. And Sana, I would like to start with you because um, I, I, I want to know what do you think about what we have inherited from the past, if you've noticed any change within the last few years, and what are the biggest challenges that women face in the business ecosystem? Thank you so much. I'm very delighted to share this panel with these uh, very interesting ladies. So maybe I can just share with you my own experience working with women in tech entrepreneurship in uh, the MENA region and also our work here in Belgium. So basically, uh, if you compare these two regions, there are kind of a lot of differences and at the same time similarities. The similarity is that we have very few women in the job market in this kind of industries and uh, more than ever technology has proved itself to be 
the power industry to be the future. And unfortunately, we are seeing less and less women uh, kind of, you know, performing or integrating this kind of industries. And this will leave them uh, uh, victims of discrimination uh, again. So uh, this is like a common issue between the two regions. But what's interesting in the MENA region is that we have more women studying STEAM. So the, blocking them from having access to the job market, it's more of a cultural and social issue than a talent issue. But here in, in Belgium, we have very few women studying STEAM. And there is no law that, you know, it discriminates them from uh, exercising a, a, a profession in the in tech field. But unfortunately, there isn't this um, interest in, 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 in kind of you know, working in tech industry, in innovation industry in general. And that's because there is this mindset where we still think that it, this is a field for men, this is a field for geek and social guys who actually are uh, interested in, 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 in robotics and in complicated machines. So I think uh, there is a lot of work to be done in terms of changing this mindset. In, ter in terms of, you know, um, pushing women to be interested in this field. And I think that should go through role models. It should go through having more women in decision making in the tech industry. Uh, we need to have more kind of uh, investment also. I mean, if we look at the few female entrepreneurs who are operating in tech industries, they have in general double trouble in accessing to investment, for instance, or accessing to uh, interesting deals. Um, so I think I would say uh, not a positive discrimination, but I would say really putting uh, the right effort and the right investment to accelerate the number of tech female entrepreneurs. Maybe that will allow in Belgium and in Europe to have more women operating and you know uh, involved and active in the tech industry. Now, when I look at the MENA region, that's a different, a, a different issue. Women are studying STEAM, and a lot of women actually are trying to establish uh, virtual startups from home because that's the only way for them actually to uh, engage and be active. So I think there is a lot of work to be done in terms of lobbying and advocacy. I think in terms of facilitating the legislation, um, uh, making sure that women don't have to go through, I would say, very uh, discriminat discriminatory laws in order for them to open a startup or a business. Um, that includes, you know, getting permission from their husband or their uh, male guardian in order to get a credit. The law of property in the mainland should change in order to allow more women to be active in the tech. Uh, and I think also what's important is to work on the mindset as a whole in, in, in region to actually say that this is not a favor that we are doing for women in order for them to be active in the tech industry. This is a right that have been, you know, they have been kind of discriminated for so long and there is no profession that is actually um, assigned to one gender or another. It's open for everyone and I think it should be allowed for everyone. And I think only by that mindset um, in school, at home, uh, in, in, in the streets, with friends, in the media, everywhere, that actually we can create this conscious. And I think now more than ever, because of poverty, because of what's happening with COVID, because of different countries in the region are going through a uh, civil war, maybe they are, they are no longer the, head, the headlines in the news, but Libya, Syria, uh, Yemen, they are still going under severe civil war that we don't hear about enough uh, here in Europe. But it's important to know that these countries are becoming poorer and poorer and poorer. It will take them more than 300 years in order to actually uh, meet the standards of gender equality. So it's important to actually uh, realize that women are the one who are going through all these um, difficult circumstances. And that's why it's important important to build a new system, a new mindset where women are involved from the start. And that goes not only by having more women becoming entrepreneurs, but it goes also by having women in political positions, having women in decision making and having women come up with strategies and policies that represent the voices of women. I also want to talk about something that, that you mentioned, which is about uh, young entrepreneurs and startups that are, that are starting. And Lael, I think you are a very good person to talk about this. Do you perceive a different attitude towards gender equality in new generations, for both professionals and companies?
can you listen to us, Layo? Yes, I can hear you now. Okay, I will. I will repeat my question. I'm sorry. I think we are having technical issues. <laughs> so I was. I, I got that, disconnected. Yes. Okay. So uh, Sana mentioned this, but I, I wanted to go into detail about new generations. Do you think that uh, both professionals and companies that are emerging at the moment have a different attitude towards gender equality? Uh, yes, I truly believe that uh, the narrative has changed, especially for women in business and for women founders specifically. Um, as Sana mentioned, uh, there's more, uh, uh, more women who are taking on uh, C-level uh, uh, positions. They're, uh, they're becoming more active in, in the boards. They're becoming more proactive in actually seeking out these positions. The attitude of women, not only men, have, have changed. Uh, towards uh, towards being in uh, in managerial positions or in in, a con in control of a company, um, uh, I believe that the new generation is being raised in a way where um, where everything is possible. Uh, and the older generation opened opened up the road for us. For, uh, the older generation of women actually opened up the road for us to believe that we can actually uh, become CEOs and chairmen, chairpersons actually, and, uh, and be able to tackle um, everything that was being called men territory or the, the male play field. So, yes. Thank you very much. And Beatriz, you work uh, at, in, in a big tech company, IBM, so, and you run a very big team. And we were mentioning that I'm sure you've thought about how to implement change, how to run change. So how has it been to develop your career within the tech industry in this company? And also, do you agree with people that call it a male world? Well, thank you, Sandra, for your introduction. Um, that, um, in my company, it's a little bit different. Uh, you know, IBM is uh, a company that is uh, uh, in the tech world for more than 109 years. And uh, from the very beginning, um, uh, IBM uh, established uh, a very strong values on, uh, on diversity. But this is not based on the, uh, on the current uh, situation. This is based in, the, in the, the origin of the company. So I have to tell you that uh, I, I, have, I have been a, a, a privileged uh, employee in, in this company, uh, me and, uh, and the rest of, the, of my uh, women colleagues. And uh, part of that, uh, uh, we have many uh, stadiums in, along, the, and along the history uh, taking consideration that uh, we had our first uh, CEO in technology, Gini Rometti, for many years, uh, just uh, uh, making a push in the, in the situation of uh, leading the company with, uh, with diversity. It is not a matter of women or males, uh, it is a matter of, of diversity and just to catch the talent, uh, whatever the talent is. And uh, in uh, in the organization, uh, I have grow I, I, I have grown with uh, that uh, value, and uh, something that is very important to uh, to remark is that you have to lead by example with the company. Uh, once you uh, you grow and uh, and you move forward in an environment where the diversity is uh, is as strong as um, as a company value, uh, you cannot differentiate. Uh, in, in, in compare with our company. So I cannot perceive in my company that we have a, a, a male world for technology, just uh, the opposite. So, um, but this is, uh, uh, I insist that this is the, um, based on the, the behavior that we have in our company, but uh, the society and the culture uh, in the international uh, environment that we are moving, um, ob obviously that's not the case. So um, I would encourage uh, the, the new talent and the new entrepreneurs just to impulse from the uh, mm -hmm. very beginning the, this kind of values regarding to the diversity. 
Perfect. And Leah, let's talk about the future. As you say, we need to start with ourselves. So what change do women need to experience themselves? Are there any stereotypes that are stopping them from joining the technology world? Can we talk about the uh, imposter syndrome, for example, the, that is well known at the moment and is, is in a lot of debates at the moment? Is it stopping women from, from enrolling uh, technological positions? Hi. <laughs> yeah, great question. So I would say like there, I can't hear my, s can you hear me? Yes, yes, we can. You can go ahead. Okay, wonderful. I think there are like external reasons, first of all. So from my point of view, like it is very important to focus on education and bring awareness to the great variety of like career path and tech, I would say in general. And then also to create like visible role models, because for most of us, it's quite challenging to aspire something we don't know. So we really have to show what is possible, first of all. And then we as companies and leaders, we really have to create job opportunities for women um, and take into consideration like flexible working hours um, and learning development and so on and so forth, particularly in the tech sector or industry. But on the other hand, surely it's our responsibility to take the ownership for our career. And that means we have to network, we have to get in touch with other role models and particularly focus on women that are interested in empower each other. And I think there is definitely a change um, and I love the world of the she economy, right? So, um, women taking actually control of their careers and they support each other um, and at the same time they for example also like changing narratives about like taboo topics and create new products and services but however it starts with ourselves so we have to self-empower each other and i think this is a very very important um, topic but from my experience, like working in the startup scene for nearly 10 years, there are a lot of like systematic challenges we have to tackle, particularly as company leaders, particularly as investors, and also as HR leaders and every single woman from herself. Thank you very much. I would like to open now the round table. Let's, uh, I, um, you've talked about this already, but I want to ask all of you to make the future of technology more diverse and equal, to boost women entrepreneurship and ultimately to promote participation on, on women in the tech sector, what, what is the change that needs to happen in corporations, in society, in education? You, do you want to start, Beatriz? Okay, I can start with that. <laughs> Um, well, I think that we uh, have to make a special uh, mention to something that uh, it is important. Um, uh, technology companies are not only needed to have tech people, professionals working on that. So that's uh, the, the very first step. Uh, we have to consider that uh, uh, the, the technology uh, is now the, uh, the base and has been the base of this fourth revolution that we are just living right now and uh, we have a, a, a lot of um, views with a huge spread of professions inside the technology uh, companies. So that's one side. In the, um, uh, and we have, uh, in based on our responsibility that we have as leaders in, in the companies, uh, we have a special um, commitment in order to bring our, uh, our careers, our success, our way of, uh, of thinking to, um, to the society. It is completely a, a, a fact that uh, if we do not uh, bring our experience into schools, into universities, in the, in the society in general, um, maybe it's difficult just to project yourself into a role like uh, like this based on that is is our <laughs> excellent uh, sana i don't know if you want to continue i i know you already talked about this a lot yes. but i'm sure you have more things to yeah <laughs> indeed i talked about this a lot this week um 
I think the, the most important thing for me, I think realizing that we need to work on the mindset. We, we need to, to, to look at the root of the problem instead of looking at its branches. Having role models is very important. Having more women as tech entrepreneurs is important. Uh, having investment in women is very, very important. But in order to kind of maintain all these changes, we need to look at the root of the problem. Now, this morning before I joined the panel, I went on Google and I wrote women should be, and then I found women should be proper. And then I clicked, I wrote men should be, and I found men should be strong. So this is Google and behind Google, there is a machine, but behind that machine, there is a human being because as a human being, we have our own stereotypes. We have our own psychology. We have our own uh, perception. And unfortunately, although machines and technology are normally uh, genderless, but however, we as humans still trans transfer our own perceptions into these machines. And through that, discrimination happens. If you go and you click on whatever word cloud, a name of she and you know, a he, you will find strong uh, uh, names associated with he and very weak and sweet and soft words are connected to a she. So these are things that are happening in, uh, uh, in, in these machines, in these robots, in the artificial intelligence platforms, and somehow they do kind of shift the same mindset. I mean, our hope is that uh, having technology changing our world because uh, the, the, the good the quality about them that are not humans, but unfortunately still, uh, the technology is a tool, it's just a tool, and we are the ones who are transforming our own perceptions and our own stereotypes through that. And that explains why in, 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 in Google and word clouds and other kind of platforms, you find this kind of type of discrimination, I would say, against women. Uh, now, for instance, another example I would like to highlight is during COVID, since this is the hot topic and this is, uh, you know, the biggest issue that we are facing today. In South Korea, they have decided to kind of track um, people in order to understand those who, ha who are negative or those who are positive. So it happened that actually a lot of women have been uh, positive, uh, COVID positive. So they have been tracked and they have been harassed and they have been actually uh, followed through their movements. And today there is a huge online harassment that these women are going through. So still we can use technology to kind of say, oh, women, because of women, we have uh, more COVID uh, cases. And actually now in South Korea, there are movements saying that women are the ones who are bringing COVID into, into the country. So this is our some silly examples, but they are very important in how they shift the mindset and the way we see women in their place. And another example I'd like to give is in the US. They are basically using um, health data. I mean, they developed uh, some uh, different health apps and uh, basically they are using the um, military staff to collect this data in order to come up with innovative uh, health solutions. So one thing we know very much is that when we look at the military people in, in the US, majority are men. So they are collecting those data in order to come up with health solutions. But that excludes women because women can have, you know, childbirth, they have their periods, they have uh, certain hormones that are different than men. So that means that we are excluding again women's, uh, you know, needs, women information, and we'll come up with solutions that are not, um, you know, in favor or they are not reflecting the needs of women. And this has been the case for centuries that women have been excluded in brain research studies, in health uh, studies, and so on. So that's why I think it's very important that we insert this diversity that already all these uh, amazing speakers have already talked about. It's very important because diversity is not only going to generate more revenues, but it will also generate an equality in society and it will help to advance our humanity. Thank you very much. Lyle, did you get to hear the question? Because I, I could see that your camera disconnected for a, for a few minutes. Yes, I, I did hear the question. Excellent. So I will, I will love you to go next. <laughs> so uh, as I understood is what are the strategies we can implement to uh, create better, uh, uh, let's say, uh, opportunities for women? Well, I think it starts at the home. 
and it starts about how we raise our uh, girls and uh, and we tell them what to do and what not to do. Uh, most societies, not only the societies that we come from, uh, from the Arab world, let's say, uh, they raise their children on the girl's gonna play with the Barbie, the guy's gonna play with the, the, the boy's gonna play with the truck, and this is how we raise our children. However, this is very wrong. Empowerment starts at a very young age. It starts about imprinting inside the minds of your children, whether uh, boys or girls, that that they can grow up, they can they can do it. while growing up, and when they reach a certain implementing their career goals, uh, so uh, changing the psychology. That's how we change the narrative of our future, and um, that's one thing. Uh, the second thing is about women supporting women, of course. Um, Sana spoke about women not being included in research and not being included in, in work, uh, let's call them rules and regulations about maternity leave and, uh, and uh, uh, health, uh, you know, uh, sick days or anything. However, it is to my surprise from study the studies that I've, I've uh, read and uh, I've watched some documentaries about this, that women are, are mainly the people uh, making these rules work sometimes the head of the or the HR woman and they seem to neglect the fact that that women might not leaves and um, include them so i think it starts by women empowering women looking at the bigger picture not just at the smaller picture of what everyone uh, needs uh, no we cannot treat women and men uh, differently at the workplace however we can create rules where uh, it's it's it fits everyone we create equity. So for me as a woman, I allowed things because I'm just a woman. I do not go into women only. The same opportunity is not available for men. So when we create that for men and for women as well, we have this type of equity where we don't forget women, we don't forget their needs, and we empower them. As uh, we uh, Actually, we mention uh, in empowering them that they are uh, being taken uh, into consideration towards being equal to men, however, as well as men are being taken into consideration as being equal to women. And um, I don't know if the idea is there, but it's about creating a, an equal workplace, an equal society for everyone, and making sure that men also take into consideration women's needs, not just uh, uh, women. And um, However, I think it's about changing the psychology on how we raise our children, on how we tell them what they can do and not do again, and uh, how we, how we uh, let them express themselves. So, for example, women sometimes allow themselves in a way where, oh, this is not very ladylike, or this is not very woman-like or girl-like. Uh, no, there's nothing called ladylike and man-like. There's, there's some empower everyone specifically women at the moment because we are being um, uh, you know disregarded in many aspects for example I come from Lebanon if I marry a foreigner I can't give my child my uh, my nationality because I'm a woman however the man can so um, these are rules made by men again and they are not taken into consideration the equity part when these rules were made so uh, at the end I, I would believe it's changing how we raise our children it starts from the very very beginning it starts from schools, from universities, creating awareness in these in these uh, places, uh, from the teachers, the, the the managers in our at our workplace as well. That's where it starts for me, and that's how we create the opportunities. Thank you very much, and Leah, if they've left anything for you, <laughs> <laughs> for sure, there's so many things to say. So first of all, I love what uh, Leah shared. I think very important points. But I would also like to highlight one fact, like focusing on the startup industry as well, um, because just to mention one number, last year um, there were over like $34 billion invested in the European tech environment and 91 percentage in male only founding teams. And this is a systematic issue. 
So we really have to educate not only our children, but also our husbands, partners and friends as women. And every single conversation matters from my point of view. So what we need is a diversity or investors that represent the diversity of society. And luckily, a lot of great women um, do that. So there's an increasing number of brilliant and beautiful female minds out there that disrupt like the VC world. And I think this is something really, really important to mention. So taking responsibility for our own life and the context we have and the conversations, but also addressing again the systematic like issues that really in a way like we have to like break them down collaboratively and collectively. Great, thank you very much. And uh, I, 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 every time I talk about these, um, I perceive an attitude that we need, we want, we have to, but we're talking to women that can actually change anything in their lives by doing specific actions. Which actions do you think anyone, a particular woman can take to, to believe in that the change is possible and to believe that it's, it is happening and, and somehow they will achieve their goals. Um, Leah, maybe you want to start. Um, yeah, happy to do that. Um, this is very private, but I, I would love to share it because it has such an important, um, or plays an important part in my life. It's actually yoga and meditation because we have to build trust in ourselves and we have to be connected in ourselves and increase awareness of what is possible every single day. No one else will teach us that. So it's about like really learning what are our needs, what are our boundaries, um, what are the people I want to work with, what is the environment I need to strive. So it's also taking responsibility to sometimes leave a job that you love, but you don't feel supported. So it's a systematic problem again. So it's really taking the ownership for the own career and do that, right? Reach for the stars and connect with other women and learn about these like different ways how to strive. Because every single journey of every single woman is very different. There's not the blueprint version, <laughs> unfortunately, but also luckily. Okay, and Beatriz? Yes, I would like yet to add a, a very um, a specific situation that we have suffered uh, during the pandemic with the, the, is the remote working that we have been uh, facing and we are facing right now. And this is a, a, an opportunity, a huge opportunity just to demonstrate that uh, the presence is not that important. And this is part of the, uh, of the pain that uh, women can afford against men. The presence at the, at the office, uh, uh, the sense of uh, being there just to gain in productivity has just been demonstrated that is not that matter. So um, I think that we have now a forced situation by, by this uh, pandemic uh, just to demonstrate that working remotely women can empower the, the way of acting, the way of, uh, of being more productive or at the same uh, level that uh, the males are. So uh, I would like just to remark that. Perfect. Lyle? Um, what, Lea, what Lea mentioned uh, for sure uh, is, uh, is one of the pillars. It is looking at ourselves and knowing what our boundaries and what our strengths are. However, um, uh, what mostly matters as well is to not just know what our, uh, our capabilities are, but how we can actually exercise these capabilities towards supporting other women. So for example, if you have a specific skill, how could you give that skill to another woman who might need it living, let's say, in, a, in an area where they do not have access to that skill uh, to learn and then how can you propagate this knowledge? And uh, as mentioned also, uh, yes, COVID-19 has empowered everyone actually to do this, uh, specifically women helping women in um, making it so easy to actually just go on and 
talk about things going on live feed and then teaching other people uh, what you know. So uh, it is about uh, empowering yourself first and then how the, the main question because knowledge is not just for you. It's, it should be for and it should be propagated to everyone. Perfect. And Sana, it's your turn. Thank you. I agree. I agree with your, your question. Uh, we tend to say that we need and we want and women need to do. Uh, and in general, I mean, when, when we kind of, at least through my, my work, um, do it, I mean, asking people to do, to change is very difficult, complicated because they have to go through different barriers. And one thing when we, you work in the region, the Arab world, uh, the Arab, Arab world is very complicated. There are a lot of limits imposed on women. So one thing we did as Women Preneur, we uh, had a program. We selected uh, 10 women to travel um, for a training program in Europe. And we selected women who have never been abroad. And the only thing I ask them is that when they uh, you know, uh, begin this journey, I want them to actually cover and report all this journey in social media. I ask them to take a picture when they're going to take the plane, where they arrive, uh, when they are taking sessions, trainings. And the objective behind doing that is that actually they're going to share it on social media. It's going to be seen by other women, by other young girls. And they'll be like, if she can do it, who is exactly like me, I can also do it. And I think only through that smooth uh, uh, way, we can actually change mindset. So this is an example that uh, I, I find like very effective in terms of changing mindset and also in terms of leading uh, more role models and more women to be active in whatever area and whatever sector. Excellent. And, and we're going to talk about something you already mentioned, Sana, which is role models. How important are they do you have any role model? Is it necessary to have a role model when becoming an entrepreneur, when running your own uh, career, when doing anything? I was uh, participating on a round table uh, last week and, and we were mentioning that role models were even important to, to look at the clothes sometimes or to just look at the attitude or to, to see what, when they started and what they have achieved after X amount of years, what steps they followed. So I want to hear your opinion, Beatriz. We were talking about this before, and you said that yeah. you had it super yeah. clear. Well, I have, I have it very clear. Um, uh, we had uh, Marta Martinez uh, just leading uh, the SPI organization in, in IBM for, uh, for eight years. Mm -hmm. And um, I, have to, I have to consider that uh, uh, she, uh, she has implemented uh, her way of acting, her... Um, uh, qualification, her strong in order to make things. So uh, as good as uh, she has uh, progressed in, uh, in her career, just to get this, uh, this uh, strong position as a SPE leader, uh, I have to remark that uh, uh, she is an, an a strong uh, uh, believer in, in herself. So uh, the, the empathy that, that she demonstrates uh, to, to, to the rest and to the clients and the very focus on, on, on the client uh, uh, oriented that we have uh, has been the, the, strong, the strong way to do it. And even, even though um, uh, Marta has been just named uh, in, in July a, a GM for uh, EMEA, Europe and Middle East, so uh, this is the, uh, the, the big step for a, for a, for a women in, in IBM. I said that Ginny Rometty uh, started in the in the tech um, uh, company as uh, the first women women uh, leading uh, a tech, and we have now Marta uh, leading an European uh, uh, geo uh, level. So um, my first uh, um, uh, reflection on on that is just uh, to consider that we said before: you have to believe in yourself. And you have to um, to help um, others to believe that uh, that uh, that they can reach this uh, kind of position. So this is the the most uh, important way to to reach. So very very clear for me. <laughs> 
What about on, on Zoom, Sana? Have you got role models? How important do you think they are? My role models actually are those we don't see in, <laughs> in media or in this type of privilege uh, conferences or events. Uh, there are women on the ground who have uh, the power of resilience. Um, one example is a, a Moroccan singer. Her name is Hajja Hindawi. I think the Moroccans who are following this event will know. Um, why for me she's a role model? Because she resisted a very uh, patriarchal system where women at the time were not allowed to sing. So she was a very small, uh, short woman in the middle of hundreds of men, she will sing. And she said that this is uh, something that no one will take from her. And through singing, for him, for her, it's a freedom. So I think for me, it was a quite interesting example from my own country to look up into and to really consider. And I think it doesn't matter your, your position. Uh, women don't have all to become entrepreneurs. What's important is for you to realize your own talent, your own dignity and your own freedom. Um, I think that's the most important thing. And uh, sometimes role models is, I mean, it's a good thing. It's important for us to have more uh, role models, but it's also it's important for us to realize that we are individual people and we need to have our own, I would say, personality and character and to follow the things that lead us to our freedom. I think this is the best, uh, the best path to, uh, toward any, any uh, role, role model. Um, yeah, I love what Sana just shared. I think it's very important to have a role model or different role models, actually. And I think it makes sense to rethink, reframe and redefine role models. So for me, for example, professionally, it's Janina Kugel. It's one of my role models. She's owning the HR for Siemens and mother of two uh, twins. And um, on the other hand, also like in my private life, there are many like very bold, uh, curious, ambitious, and also women that embrace humility towards lifelong learning and like um, not pushing things with the ego, but really like embracing their own personality and the importance of supporting each other. So I think role models are very, very important. Um, but I think also we, are, we should all see each other at an eye level. We all can learn from each other, no matter the position or the, I would say, seniority. Um, yeah. Okay, Laya? Um, definitely role models are something very important for uh, women to grow up looking up to. Uh, if we could... Uh, name one person who's a role model for me, that would be my mother. Uh, it could, this is a bit cliche perhaps, however, yes, my mom comes from a very tiny town that I come from in the north of Lebanon. She worked her entire life as a school director and raised three daughters along with my father, of course. However, I grew up seeing my mom work, go to work, pick me up from school, make lunch, help me with my studies, work on herself and get uh, degrees and learn new languages. And then I saw my aunts as well. Her sisters do the same. So my role models are those women I grew up with and with my childhood that told me you can do anything. When I was six years old, I told them I want to change the world. They didn't say no. And they have a video of that, <laughs> me saying it. And they're like, you, you wanted to change the world. We never said no to you. Um, I, was, I was with my aunts a lot uh, when my mom was working. And um, I saw my aunts actually come back from their jobs as well in the middle of the day, help me with my studies. So when you see this growing up, I didn't grow up and I, I, am, I, I wasn't born like this. I grew up in an atmosphere that enabled me to become like this, that told me that, look, all the women in your family, they work, they raise families, they have children, and uh, they take care of each other, they take care of themselves as well. Um, my mom lives a very healthy lifestyle and she projects it to us as well. So uh, uh, when you grow up in those, uh, in those atmospheres, in, in that uh, environment that enables you and knows, uh, that tells you actually, like, there's someone here doing this, and that means you can actually do it as well. 
uh, then you know that options are endless and you can do everything. So my role model will forever be my mom, my aunts, of course, and the women along the way when I was raised in, in my community. Um, I don't know if uh, in, in Europe you could relate to how difficult it could be to, to be in a very tiny town of, of 200, 300 people in population and be able to, to, uh, to be on FNF Madrid uh, in 2020. It's very difficult and I couldn't have done it without the women supporting me along the way, specifically the women in my family who showed me the, the route. So I, um, I joined the innovation ecosystem to Talent Garden not long ago, just actually in, in March. So I've experienced the whole pandemic thing. And one thing that I'm, I'm glad to see is that all the, the female communities, the, the, the women <laughs> entrepreneurs, we are all very active. We are willing to do anything just to, to help, but not only the, our cause or, or anything that we're doing, anyone. So. Um, Apart from that, apart from how active we are, what other things do you think are helping the world to change? What is positioning women in a stronger position each day? What is uh, making that we are having this international roundtable today? What is it that is changing and making the, the, the um, gender equality a reality in the future? Let's start um, with Beatriz. <laughs> okay. Well, I think that um, a society is uh, making a, a big uh, effort just to impulse the, the diversity. Uh, in, in the case that we have in, in Spain, for example, just in the, in the care of the, of the babies when uh, you have a um, child, uh, just to compare the, the time that the, the woman has to be at home or the man in this case. So that kind of a small uh, uh, steps in order to equilibrate uh, the, the presence, as I said before, in, uh, in, in the domestic uh, careers and domestic um, duties is, uh, is, is a base. So uh, I think that it is not only a matter of uh, make a big change because that's impossible, but uh, small steps just to move forward to these uh, kind of uh, actions in order to equilibrate um, the work. In my case, I have uh, uh, two kids. Uh, I didn't have any, I didn't face any, any problem just to, um, to consider that uh, I have to be care, care of, of them and I just, I'm the mother. So I never perceived that uh, that could be a problem for me in order to grow in my, in my career. Uh, the case of uh, of Marta is 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 the same. She she has uh, three three childs, big now, but uh, the the family uh, is not an stopper in order to to grow, which is something that uh, maybe uh, in in the past I, I, I have to say that is in the past uh, many companies uh, were trying just to uh, to to keep the the, uh, the women uh, a little bit uh, out of this uh, uh, management. Uh, roles in order to uh, avoid uh, that kind of uh, situations. But uh, I think it is not a matter of making an, a, a strong uh, and change, but uh, step by step, uh, I think that we can, we can move forward. And again, I ha I, we have a, a huge uh, responsibility. I, 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 we are dedicating time uh, just to communicate uh, to, to other uh, women in order to impulse uh, this because I think that we have a, a debt uh, with the society, with the companies and with the women that they are listening to us in order to uh, believe that uh, we can do it and, I, and we are going to do it. So um, again, just to offer our, uh, our time, our efforts, uh, offer our experience it's a, I, I think it's our uh, way to make it uh, more vocal in the, in the world in order to be changed. <laughs> Excellent. And Lyle, what do you think? Maybe we can, okay. Maybe we can go to Sana instead. <laughs> Very, very important question. Very difficult to answer at the same time. I think if we find the right formula for change, we will need to be paid for that. <laughs> uh, 
Um, I think change, I mean, starts from creating awareness and creating this consciousness. And I think this is something that this type of event is already doing. And I think the more consciousness we, we kind of, you know, create in society, the, the easiest uh, it is for us to actually implement change. So I do believe that it's important to talk about this, some uncomfortable subject, uncomfortable uh, situations, for women to share their experiences, to share what they think. I mean, if we look at COVID situation, it's true that working from home facilitated so many things, but there, is, there are a lot of, uh, uh, I mean, pressure at home. Uh, a lot of people are facing now mental and psychological problems. And it happened that a majority of these people are women because there are a lot of handers, you know, up and on their shoulders. So it's important for them to open up and speak and talk about these issues. So I really think uh, only by sharing more and creating this consciousness and saying that it's okay to, to talk about, uh, you know, uh, certain difficult issues that, that we can by then identify the right tools for change. Lyle, we can now go back to you. Yes, uh, I, was, uh, I was mentioning, could you, could you repeat the question, please? Because I got disconnected. Sure. So we were saying that what is it that is happening to, that makes us believe in change? That, that is actually, I was mentioning that uh, female communities, uh, even female entrepreneurs, are very, we are very active. We are very willing to help on, on any occasion. So why? Um, the why is a very important question. Uh, so to answer it, Sandra, is we probably were not given the same opportunities that we are giving to women in tech at the moment, women in general, but specifically women in tech. So this why is why we keep giving and we're, we're we volunteer our time. Not only we, we, we ask for payment, we don't sometimes like anybody who needs help, we try to help them. Um, uh, but, but yes, it's, it's, it is the right uh, question. Uh, we as women, uh, let's, let's talk about me. I, I was raised uh, in an environment that I mentioned. However, when you go out into the bigger environment and see that not everyone got the same, uh, let's call it knowledge or upbringing that you had, and then uh, you find people who need specific um, knowledges that you have, and you're like, but why don't you know this? So, for example, swimming. Why don't you know how to swim? Everybody in Lebanon knows how to swim. We're by the sea. And, and uh, one of my was a girl, because I had decided we're allowed to go to the beach, so I'm immediately like, I'll teach you, go with me. So when you go into the business that we're raised, you find that not everyone knows everything you know, and you feel the responsibility to tell them. Uh, throughout my entire life, this has been a feeling and not an obligation that if I know something, I do not own this information. Uh, it is not mine. I learned it by experience or by studying it. However, I have... I have this responsibility to give it to someone else. So um, during the COVID times, this has become actually easier because you're able to catch people sitting at their home offices or at home working and you can have a Zoom call with them and teach them whatever you want. However, uh, things are changing, I believe, uh, for women and uh, it is because women are supporting women first. And, uh, and the, the, this session is, a, is an example. We are five women here talking about how we can help other people and other women in the world. So things are changing, yes. Leah? Yeah, I think it's a wonderful question and one of the most important ones from my point of view. Um, I have a strong echo, but I hope you can hear me. Super, amazing. Um, I could just like speak for myself. So. Working in the startup scene opened up so many like opportunities for me personally. And what I experience is there are many women out there that um, understand that they created of their own like career and empower each other, but there are also a lot of men like rising that understand there is a need. And I personally experienced that and this is amazing. And speaking for the startup industry, for example, um, it's one of the main drivers for like 
technology innovation and also like a fast growing job creating market. Um, and um, yeah, also like big corporate, for example, in the tech field, um, founding their own startup or accelerator programs. So there's a lot of potential for women um, or for women, particularly in the tech field. But I think, again, it is very important to understand that we have to support girls and women um, to really learn about tech. What does it mean? What are different like career paths? Um, what are like the stories of, of women today? Um, what can they share? What is their experience and so on and so forth? And then taking the ownership for the own role and supporting women. And that I would like to share like two or three examples. Like mean for me, for example, as an HR lead, um, for example, creating opportunities to kind of like hijack the education problem. So to, in a way, like create possibilities for lateral career entries. So actually providing opportunities for women that have a non-tech background, not a STEAM background, but to really start a career in that field later stage, maybe after a couple of years working. And secondly, also like creating opportunities for internal career fluidity, I would call it, right? So to create opportunities that really people can learn from each other and see what are the tech roles in the company and also HR sharing future potential like positions. Um, so there is a potential to also switch within the company to start a tech career. So this is my responsibility actually as an HR leader to make sure this is possible and to empower women to do that. And I think if we all think about our own lives, private and professional, and see where we can make a change and we can make a mark, then we really, in a way, like create an even more nurtured felt high ground for more women in the tech industry. Um, yeah. You are all mentioning uh, that it is important that women support other women. I, I was just told that we have a lot of fans of Lyle posting comments on YouTube. <laughs> so I think that's a great example of how <laughs> we can support each other. And you've also talked about role models and I'm sure you are a role model for a lot of people. So congratulations. And I would like to, to all the attendees of, of this round table to leave with a feeling. Are we feeling positive about the change? Are we feeling negative and why? Do you want to start, Bertie? 100% positive, absolutely. And um, I think uh, as well that uh, we are just promoting in, in IBM um, some kind of tip that uh, maybe can help others to, to expand this spirit and this positiveness and this uh, passion for uh, empower the, the, the women and it, this is based on mentoring programs. So uh, I am uh, leading a mentoring program in, in, in IBM just to support all the women uh, in order to grow, in order to make some advice or in order to get connected with others that maybe uh, li like to make a role model of that. So just in order to address uh, uh, new people coming in the company, or not only in the company, but outside. Uh, when I go uh, to any uh, speech, any, any uh, round table, I always say the same. So if, uh, if you want to use me, do it. Do it. I, I, I can help you yet just uh, to move, or I can just uh, share my situation. I can share what uh, I, 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 I I wouldn't did in the past in order to help you to move forward. So, so uh, uh, the, the mentoring program that uh, we are just leading and pushing uh, is coming from in the internal of the organization in the, in the tech, which is very important for others to uh, get to realize that uh, this is uh, completely positive and we are in the good sense uh, to, to get it. Absolutely positive about that. <laughs> Excellent. Lyle? Next, <laughs> I think uh, uh, Lyle uh, will will wait a little bit more. Uh, Leah, do you want to go next? <laughs> oh, happy to do so. Um, yeah, hundred percent positive for sure. Um, but I have to say, I would also love to um, see more safe spaces for women growing, where we really speak about like private and professional like challenges, because I think. Um, there might be a tendency also that we like very 
um, yeah, celebrate ourselves. That is amazing and all our achievements. And I think authenticity is something very important to strive also sustainably. So I think it's amazing if we also embrace that, that we like ask for help. And this is for all of us. For most of us very challenging right to say like i have no clue what to do do you have an advice or <laughs> i have a challenge i don't know to, how to tackle it and i think this is very important so no matter the seniority grade or degree again like to ask for help and to reach out proactively and not like being shy about like not being the perfect woman that have everything and all the things together right so I love the trend and I love what we are doing. And um, I think also today is very, very important to have a reach and to increase the reach to talk about these things very openly. So I love that. Perfect. Sana? Um, for me, I can only be positive. Um, as we say in French, l'espoir fait vivre, which means uh, hope makes us live. So I think it's very important to be positive because positive minds lead to positive changes. Excellent. And Lyle, I think we've got you back. Yes, I think we can listen to you. I wouldn't like to close the round table without your attitude. Are we positive? Uh, why are we positive about the change? Hello. I'm so sorry. I think we need to we need to move forward. Thank you very much. Can you hear me? We can't hear you. Okay, maybe maybe we can share with you her insights uh, after the 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 event. Thank you very much for coming here. We have. Um, like amazing women here today thank you very much for your insights and your knowledge and your advice i'm sure the all the attendees are appreciating your words and uh, stay with us for the closer remarks right away don't forget to stay tuned at the foundation's facebook page is at fnfmad for future events and uh, today we talked about tech women for empowerment and development a very timely topic in these uh, challenging times due to covid situation and and of course the the activity that we are seeing here today hi highlights that we are we are making change thank you very much thank you it's a privilege to be with you here today <laughs> thank you thank, thank you, you. I was born uh, 57 years ago. My father told me that I was a boy, but um, I, I felt me something different. Take the decision to be a woman from men in, when you are in that uh, professional, social, and familiar environment is very complicated. It has been very positive for me because uh, I've learned a, a new way to lead uh, the companies.
Mediterranean Tech Women Week has come to an end. During the last days, we have listened to live stories and inspiring talks of outstanding women uh, in the tech sector. These uh, last days were a true, true inspiration for action. Uh, and as FNF uh, and as, as liberals, we believe in creating opportunities for all. And all the, the results and comments we have uh, heard during the last uh, days has inspired us for taking steps into the future. Uh, to, this is only, it's true that today is the last day of our week, but I, I'd rather say that this is the beginning of a bigger journey uh, towards a creation of a, a network, uh, a Mediterranean tech uh, women network and keep working together. What you have seen during the last days is just the results of all wonderful women that came up together to make this, this kind of dream come true. This wouldn't have been possible, of course, uh, to, uh, for the FNS uh, initiative, but with the support of Womanpreneur Initiative, Zana, that is here today with me. Also, Eva Diaz, that cannot join us today at the studio, to her network at Mujeres Tech, and to my wonderful colleagues at the Foundation, Raki, that is also behind the scenes, and also Yara from, from MENA region that is always supporting us to, to improve and enlarge our network. So stay with us. Uh, I will say that we will keep uh, updating our social networks social networks with so many other news on women. And now I just give uh, the floor to Zana so she can also share her closure remarks. Thank you so much, Odilia. What can I say after what everything you've already summarized? It has been a pleasure working with you and I would like to thank you on behalf of Women Brenner. Uh, to thank you, Odilia, David, Raquel, Yara, and the whole team. And also to thank Eva from Mujeres Tech. It has been amazing to kind of collaborate with you on this very important initiative. I think if there is anything that we have learned from this amazing event this whole week is that change is possible, investment is important, collaboration is a necessity. And I think only by having this mindset, we can actually change the whole Mediterranean. Having women in the front line, alongside men leading their societies for an economic, political, and a social change and progress. So now it's really our, our time to say goodbye. Uh, stay tuned. Uh, we will work towards creating opportunities for business among Mediterranean tech women and also to give them the opportunity to keep working together. Thank you very much for joining us during this week.